This video is walking through the understanding quadratic function activity. Uh, before this, you should have gone through the example uh, that looked at what makes a quadratic function quadratic. And through that, you would have discovered that a quadratic function ends up having a constant second difference. And that second difference is actually the rate of change of the rate of change. And so, we're going to be looking today at what do the sort of a, um, a, b, and c sort of parameters of our quadratic function actually represent within context. And we'll be using sort of our, our ideas and what we know about functions in general and rates of change to gain a better understanding of what those sort of pieces of our function represent. And these ideas will actually sort of come back um, indirectly as we sort of, as you take future math courses. All right, so we're going to be <coughs> looking at a function uh, that models the population of Arizona. Um, and so we were given um, a function, an equation this time, and we're also given a table of values. And so t is number of years since 2000, and um, p is the population of Arizona. And so question one is just, you know, generally how is the population changing? And you know, if we take a quick look here, I'll notice I start at, you know, 5,112,000, 5 and then it goes up to 5,369,000. 5 and so each of these numbers is getting bigger. And so generally the population is increasing. My graph is going up. Now, the next step is, or the next question is asking, what is the population of Arizona in the year 2000? And that's right here in our table. Um, the year 2000 would be our um, initial value. And so we have uh, 5,112.35 thousand people. Now, if we take a look, this particular number does make an appearance in the equation. And so this value right here, notice it's the same as that number in our function. And so this is in that C position right there. And so this is our sort of C value. Now, why will C always come out as our vertical intercept? Well, if you remember, your vertical intercept should occur when your input value is zero. So in this particular case, or in any, if I want to sort of generalize this, if I took that sort of general quadratic function form and I replaced each of my variables with zero, I would have zero squared plus b times zero plus c, both the you know, a the initial term, the squared term, and the x term would go away, and I'd be left with just c. And so on our quadratic function, that vertical intercept is always going to have a value of c. So we've, we've sort of figured out what that c parameter represents. It's our initial value. All right, so let's turn our attention now um, to another parameter. So here we actually are going to want to estimate the instantaneous rate of change at the vertical intercept. So basically we want to figure out um, the slope at sort of our initial point as close as we can get. Now normally a slope on a quadratic, here's sort of a quadratic, would be sort of, you know, the rate of, you know, average rate of change would get us sort of the slope between two points. But we want as close as we can to the slope sort of at an individual point or what we'll call in calculus the slope of the tangent line. And so to do that, basically, you know, our slope or our rate of change would be the change in P over change in T, change in time. But we're going to want to make that change in time really, really small. 
And the smaller we can get, the like the smaller that interval is going to be, the closer we're going to get to the you know instantaneous rate of change. Now, in the end, it's oh, it's it's going to be an estimate, but we can sort of shrink that interval down as close as we can to get an accurate sort of uh, an accurate estimate. And so I'm going to change change for a minute over to um, Desmos. And so what you'll notice I've done here is I I've put in our function, so that's up there, and I called it P, and then I created sort of a formula for the slope. Now I put in the letter or letter A, and just to have you sort of look, so if we found the slope between, you know, um, one year, so 2001 and 2000, we would get 129.7 people per year. But, you know, I can make that interval a little smaller, so let's say we go to point, oops, about 0.9, now we're up to 129.7 people per year. And so we can sort of keep shrinking this, but you might be going, well, why don't we shrink it to zero? But if you shrink it to zero, then I get a number over zero and I can't divide by zero. So we wanna get to as close to zero without actually hitting zero. So notice like now I'm at you know, 0 0.02, so I'm getting a little closer. I'm actually gonna switch to typing. Ooh. 130.67 when I I have you know a thousand um a hundredth as my difference but what if I uh, make it a little smaller now I'm at 130.679 or I could even make it smaller um, you know and I can sort of see now as I make my number small my sort of interval smaller and smaller so this is the sort of the the change in t interval right here, that's what A is representing. I can sort of start to see that it's going to round to 130.68, you know, thousand people per year. Now, if I go back up to my quadratic function up top, and let's sort of close that out, you should notice, and I'm going to switch colors here, that shows up right here. That's my B value. So this, this number that we found, that instantaneous rate of change, is the B term of our quadratic function. And so what is the, the meaning of that parameter? Well, then, well, it's what we found here. It's the instantaneous. So it's if we could find the rate of change at that exact moment in time. So it's the instantaneous rate of change at the input value when the input value is zero. So in this particular situation, it is how quickly the population of Arizona was increasing in the year 2000 exactly when it started. All right, so we figured out what C represents, we figured out what B represents, so now we're left to sort of figure out what this A value is. So, you know, thinking we, we're gonna wanna sort of figure out where does this negative 0.98 come from? Now, to do that, we're gonna have to go sort of back to this idea of the rate of the rate. Now, looking here, um, you should notice um, we have uh, the table here, and we're going to start by just finding the rate of change. Now, it is a change in P over change in T, and in this case, unlike one of our earlier examples, we actually need to find the average rate of change, because if you notice here, my change in T is 2. So it's not just going to be our change in Y, we need to divide out that change in time. So, you know, it's, it's going up by 2 every time. So plus two, plus two. And so what that means here is I would take the difference in my y's. So, you know, 5,369.79 minus 5,102.35, all divided by two. And I would come out with 128.72, you know, thousand people per year. And I'm running out of space.
And I would keep doing this for all of them. And so this comes out to 124.8 and 120.88. And I notice that this rate of change, this average rate of change is getting smaller and smaller, but it is positive. And remember, initially we said that our our function was increasing. And so that makes sense. Like, oh, it's a positive value. Um, my function is, go you know, it's a positive slope. It's a positive rate of change. My function's going up. Now, the second rate sort of tells how the rate is changing. And I might notice just by looking that these numbers are getting smaller. So I sort of know uh, in the back of my head that my rate is changing at a decreasing rate. So I'm going to expect these values to be negative. Now, notice I'm looking for the rate of the rate of change, which means I have that change in time again. So this is my change in the rate and then divided by the change in time, which is still two. And so here would be like the difference between these two. So 124.8 minus 128.72, all divided by two, comes out to negative 1.96, thousands of people per year per year. I know, it's a weird unit. Or you could think of, you know, thousands of people per year squared is another way. Sometimes people write it. I like the per year per year. Um, and if I did this every single time, this is a quadratic function, so guess what's gonna happen with my second difference? It ends up being the same. They're all negative, and that makes sense because remember we said it appeared to be a decreasing rate um, as we sort of went through. And so, Let's just interpret these numbers and sort of what they represent. So what is the rate of change from zero or two to four mean in the context of the problem? Um, well, the population of Arizona um, increases at an average rate of, and then we're looking at this value right here, 124.8 thousand people per year between, and you have to give the years because the rate's not constant, 2002 and 2004. All right. So we completed the second tau. Describe what this information tells us. Well, as we mentioned earlier, the rate is decreasing at a constant rate. So the rate is decreasing at a constant rate of 1.96 thousand people per year every year. So every year that goes by, the rate decreases by that much. So let's go now to our function. Our question is, you know, when we look at sort of this A value here, how does that A value relate to this 1.9, this negative 1.96? And this is a hard one to sort of see, but if you notice, to get from this value to that rate of the rate, this would be a multiply by two relationship. Um, 0.98 times two would be 1.96. And that's gonna hold true with all of ours. So if you notice here, you know, our rate of the rate in the yogurt problem that we did in the PowerPoint, that came out to 29.98, which is double that 14.99. If I took 14.99 and times to by two, I end up with my rate of my rate. So basically, if I take two times my A value, that's gonna tell us the rate at which the rate is changing. 
Hopefully this sort of helps you um, better understand um, this activity. Uh, and if you have any questions, uh, you know, make sure you sort of sum it up so that you have it in your um, notes. And um, if you go back to the PowerPoint, there's actually an extra problem that you can try out to sort of test how well um, you understand what the A, B, and C values represent in context.